points here uh, on that particular line. Uh, we could we could solve it for when when y okay, is equal to when y is equal to zero. Because when y is equal to zero, what we'd end up with is we'd end up with this specific value here. Uh, so what we're saying is uh, when the net present value is zero, the line actually intersects this interest rate this interest rate axis and this thing here is called the internal rate of return or the internal or the internal internal rate of return for the project okay so we need to do this we need to figure out how to get this formula and it's actually straightforward enough so we have we need two things from linear algebra so let's say we have our linear uh, not linear algebra let's say we have our coordinate geometry coordinate uh, geometry uh, of the line okay uh, and what we need is the slope of a line, the slope given two points, let's say m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then given a point and a slope, we can actually calculate the line itself. So the equation of the line is given by y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 okay so where's slope now okay which doesn't much matter which point we choose let's just assume that this is this is x1 y1 here let's assume that the second calculation is x2 y2 we now have therefore we have our slope is equal to well it's it's y2 which is n2 minus y1 which is n1 all over x2 which is i2 minus I1. That's the slope of the relationship between two net present value calculations at two different interest rates. Okay, and now our equation of the line. So the line is now y minus y1. Well, y1 is n1. Okay, must be equal to m, which is well, we just calculate the slope. It's n2 minus n1 all over i2 minus i1. Okay, uh, times x minus x1, and x1 is i1 in this case, so it's minus minus i1. Okay. And let's keep in mind that the solution that we're looking for is when y is equal to zero. So when y equals zero, okay, when y is equal to zero, we end up with the relationship between the x's. The x here is the interest rate that we're looking for is minus n1 uh, is equal to this coefficient here, which is the m, n2 minus n1 over i2 minus i1 must be times x minus i1 and what we're going to do now is we want to solve for x because x is the the value along this line when y is equal to zero so we're going to solve for x we're going to cross multiply so this becomes what i'll do is i'll just take this here up here okay so multiplying across by i2 minus i1 gives us let's say uh, minus n1 times i2 minus i1 must be equal to n2 minus my n2 minus n1 minus n1 times x minus i1. Multiply now all the brackets, we end up with minus n1 i2 plus n1 i1 is equal to, in this case here, this is n2 x, and then we have minus n2 i1, and then we have minus, excuse me, we have minus n1 x, and finally the n1 times the i1, negative times negative gives us plus uh, n1 i1 and what we can actually see is some things cancel out we have a an, an i1 n1 over here and we have one here so they cancel out and anything else that we have and uh, no, that's all that's all that we have here now at this stage so now what we can bring is we bring to keep x's over to one side we're going to bring this this value over here so when this comes over it becomes positive and you can actually see what we have when that comes over it becomes uh, n2 i1 what's left over here is minus n1 I2 and that must be equal to well we brought this over the only two things that are left over here is n2 x minus n1 x common value here which is the x so now we have n2 i1 minus n1 i2 is equal to x times n2 minus n1 solving for x so therefore we have x which is the interest rate internal rate of return must be equal to n2 i1 minus n1 i2 all over uh, well this this particular factor here which is n2 minus n1 okay the key thing here is that we've assumed linearity okay we assumed a straight line going through these two points okay so it's important that when we're actually performing this calculation that we choose two interest rates that are relatively uh 
well, two interest rates that results in two points that are relatively close to each other, yeah? Um, okay, and a little bit of experience helps you with that. But look, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. And I mean, this is just going to give us a ballpark figure of what the actual internal rate of return for the project should be, okay? Yeah, so guys, uh, once again, uh, this was John Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Yeah, and I hope that this video uh, was in some way helpful for you and more importantly i hope that was uh, i hope i hope it was intuitive yeah and helps you with your helps you with this particular uh, concept uh, on on whatever on whatever you're studying okay and thanks for watching okay bye bye